Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is the easy troubleshooting of an X13. This is an ECM blower motor, and this one actually has 24 volt signals right here from 1 through 5, and this is powered all the time with 120 volts, or other models are powered with 240 volts right here. So let me first go over what each of the terminals here mean, and then we'll get into how to troubleshoot this. This right here is the module off the end of the X13 blower motor and right here is where you have your electrical connections. So we're going to go over these electrical connections. It's important to note that this right here is your 24 volt common. The rest of these taps up here are for your high voltage, either 120 volts or 240 volts as stated on the rating plate of the X13 blower motor. So this right here is L for line, so if you had a 120 volt furnace powering this then this was your 120 volt hot, this is your ground, G for ground, and then N for neutral or common. If it was a 240 volts stated on the rating plate, then this will be one of your 120 volt hots. This will be your other 120 volt hots. It's also important to notice that this is always hot with a high voltage anytime that the air handler or the furnace is on. Now down here, each of these are your speed taps, and these are programmed at the factory uh, so you have Gentech makes these blower motors and then they're sent to the manufacturers. So whether you have it as York or, or say Bryant or whoever, what they're going to do is they're going to actually uh, set these speeds for the correct volume of air needed for that model number air handler or furnace. So this plug would actually fit right in here like this and here you have where the other end of this plug goes right on a control board and in this case you see uh, the colors are always going to be different, but in this case, your yellow is a spare, your orange is a spare, so those taps are not used on here. So this is, happens to be two and also four. Then you see that your red is low speed heat, your gray is cooling, and then your blue is high speed heat. So these are all marked, and then this, your common, that's where this would attach to, right to that tap right there. So these will always be set differently depending on the manufacturer, but there is a way to go ahead and test this just to make sure that your blur motor actually is working and that the problem is not the control board. Now we're plugged in, so our transformer should have power and our 120 volt X13 blur motor should have power. We're gonna read our voltages, 28 volts there, 28 volts there, and 122 volts, which is correct. So now that we know that we have 24 volt power here and that this is going to be our 24 volt hot and that we have 120 volts here, our commons attached, we can go ahead and test each of our speed tap terminals. So all you're going to do is you're just going to hold that and after about two seconds you should be able to see some movement. The other thing is you want to make sure that the uh, blower motor is pushing at a steady speed. So if you want to go ahead and keep that tap on there and just make sure that it's that the blower motor is not ramping up and then ramping down because that would be a signal uh, that the module here is bad. It should be able to just maintain a constant airflow. We're just going to go ahead and check each of these speed taps. Now some of these are programmed as shown on our control board right here and some are not. Some are spares. But usually what's going to happen is the motor's still going to turn on those. It's just they may not be set at an accurate speed. In reference to troubleshooting these blower motors, the best thing I can tell you to do is to have all of your electrical connections already go ahead and tightened in. So in this case it's alligator jumpers. It's going to be a little different when you're in the field and this blower motor is in a uh, furnace cabinet that's very very tight. So what I would suggest you do is that you just go ahead and have your alligator clip set up ready to go or your connection there and you're just reading your 24 volt signals at the control board. You want to make sure that you don't have your hands near the 120 volts or the 240 volts. So you just want to be reading your 24 volt signal uh, just for safety and you don't want to have your hands back in the blur motor area. So once all your electrical connections are, are connected, then you can go ahead and turn the power on to your furnace or air handling in order to check to see if the blur motor is going to go ahead and turn on. As long as you know that you're sending 24 volts to this and the motor is not spinning, then you can go ahead and move on to the next step. 
So we're going to go ahead and take this cover off of the module and we're going to go ahead and test the motor. Also, before you even bother doing any of these tests, you should always uh, check your uh, blower motor wheel. So you make sure that you have the power off to the furnace of the air handler and you put your hand in the blower wheel area and you make sure that it can actually spin freely, that the bearings are not stuck and also that the bearings are not falling apart and there's no rocking in there. So now we'll go ahead and take this apart. So now that we have the motor apart, you see that this connection, all you have to do is when you unscrew these two screws right here, you're just going to take it real easy and then just unclip this connector. Then you're going to visually inspect the module right here. So you make sure that there's no burn marks, the capacitors are in uh, good shape. Typically, it's one of these three items that are going to break on this typically, uh, unless you end up having accidental water damage come in here. Uh, but this is all you're going to do on this is just a visual test. On here, you're going to do a resistance value test right here. If this uh, part is bad, then you know that this is still good. If this is good, then you know that that's bad. So what you should have is three uh, matching resistance values right here. So you don't put your probes in this end. You want to go ahead and make sure that you're putting your probes in the back end. You don't want to squish the uh, connectors or actually open the connectors up. You see that we're reading 12.2 ohms. Then you're going to take the other wire right there, about 12 ohms. All right, and 12.1 ohms. So those are matching. The other thing that you want to check for is just to make sure that each of these windings are not grounded to the ground frame. So you see that we're reading OL, which is over limit or open line, and that's what you want. You don't want any resistance value with each of these windings. If you got 0.0, .0 or some type of resistance value, then that means that these windings in, in here have actually uh, melted apart and are touching the ground frame. So this motor is good. And this is not the problem, then your module would definitely be the problem if that were the case, if this motor was not turning on. If you're looking for the multimeter used in the video, I have that link down in the description below. And if you want to help support this HVACR training channel, check out patreon.com slash acservicetech. Well, we're rewarding the members there by adding extra content, such as articles, videos, and answering questions. The way that Patreon works is supporters there are pledging to give a dollar, three dollars, five dollars, and up for new HVAC videos posted to the AC Service Tech channel. In order to show my appreciation, I add extra content there. I try to spend extra time answering questions with them. I have a bunch of articles written uh, and posted there, as well as videos. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech channel.